Today, I'm talking with Ellen Raw on how to make sure your employees are paid correctly so that they feel rewarded and so it benefits the growth of your business. What Ellen explained to me is that a lot of payment models don't actually benefit scaling your business, which is bonkers. But don't worry, she shares the right way to pay your employees. Now, Ellen is the person to speak to when it comes to scaling a service business. Ellen and her husband had a plumbing business. And when Ellen joined to be on the business side of the plumbing team, the business went from bad to worse. The business was further and further in debt and her and her husband were on the brink of divorce. Now, Ellen knew something had to change. And that's when she looked at the skills she didn't have, which was financial knowledge. And she hired a mentor to help her with this. That person helped her scale a business to the point where she was able to sell that plumbing business, but it doesn't stop there. Ellen then became the president of Benjamin Franklin, another plumbing business that they grew from zero to 47 locations across America and doing 40 million in franchise sales in just two years. But Ellen has just got a thirst for knowledge. So after making such a success of that plumbing business, she has set up another franchise called Zoom Drain, which already she has scaled from zero to 18 locations across America. She knows how to grow service businesses and really knows how to speak to employees. She jumps in the car with plumbers, even to this day, to see how they're enjoying working for the business that she's in. So she really knows it from two sides, scaling the business and being the plumber that wants to get paid. You don't wanna miss the advice that she gives and I can't wait to share it with you. So you do not need a cup of coffee before this session because this lady is a ball of energy. <laughs> this Woo! is Ellen. And Ellen is gonna talk about the right way to pay your employees. Ellen, thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I Can we start with the wrong way? Yes, please. Okay, let's start with the wrong way. And, and while I have had an illustrious career in the trades, once upon a time when I was a kid, I had a lot of jobs. So I've been an employee a lot, yeah. a lot of times. And these are the wrong ways to pay your team members. I can remember them. One is the side deal. Okay. So the side deal is if I knock on your, you're the boss, mm -hmm. and I knock on your door at 5 p.m. on a Friday. It's even better if someone just quit. So now I know you're desperate. You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to knock on the door, and I'll give you some kind of story as to why you don't want to lose me, and you better give me a raise. Yeah. And because there's no good reason to give me a raise, this becomes a side deal. So you tell me not to tell anybody. So this is a, my wife's pregnant. Yeah. My car just broke down. Mm -hmm. I just got a bigger house. Mm -hmm. Can I get a raise? Yes. Nice. Right. And so now if you tell me not to tell anybody, side deal, what happens is someone's going to ask me, how much do you make? Because everybody on your team knows how much everybody else makes yep. because they ask each other. So you put me in the position of either lying or telling them and either way I lose. So a side deal, everybody loses. It's not fair. It's not transparent. Yeah. So a better way to pay would be to make it clear what every position in the company makes. Post it. So it, where is it? Where is it live? You could, you could do it. You could make an organizational chart. And this is, you know, if you're a tradesperson, yeah. there might be an apprentice, junior tech, senior tech, um, field supervisor, you know, you move up the ladder, up the organizational chart. And there could be a Word document associated with that org chart that tells you how much each position pays and what you need to do to get to the next position and it's posted. Or it's on your Google yeah. Drive and someone can look up, look it up, or it's part of your orientation. You know, just like get the mystery out. Also, I think women make less than men because of this um, secretive nature of yes. how much we pay. Now in the US, it is not common for people to talk about how much they pay. I don't know about the Same UK. Same in the UK. Okay, yeah. so it's considered bad form. Yeah. All right, so, but they all know, right? And, and so what happens is now it just becomes this undercurrent of distrust. Mm -hmm. So let's not do that. True. So one thing is the, is the side deal. And how else? What's other bad practices for paying? Because I know I and people out there are guilty of them. 
Well, I like to pay it. now. If we're my area of expertise is I am a drain cleaning queen at Zoom Drain. That's what we do. So I my focus is on the trades, as is yours. Yes. Okay. So generally, I, you can pay either commission or hourly or a combination. Uh -huh. We pay mainly hourly. And the hourly pay is going to be based on what position you hold on the org chart and you and your team are going to assemble that ladder. Yes. All right. Now, you could create a bonus structure for those who do more. So, like, suppose I work harder. I take an extra shift. I put in uh, more miles. I walk faster. If I sell more, I could make more. So one of the wrong ways to pay is that we give bonuses for something other than results or production. So for instance, yep. you're feeling generous and you've got super hard workers and a couple of key people who are just like open mouth breathers and then you pay everybody, <laughs> you know, a thousand pounds at Christmas time. Yeah, that okay. holiday bonus. So that bonus is yeah. not reflective of someone's extra effort. Mm -hmm. So that's a wrong way to pay. So a right way to pay may be to establish a sales bonus for people who are making sales or a production bonus for someone who is putting in the work. Mm -hmm. And if you could match that bonus to the production, that's a better way to pay. Does that make sense? Yes. You know what I hate? Tell me. The holiday bonus. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And suppose you had a great year yeah. and you're feeling uber generous yeah. and you're and then the next year, not so great a year. However, every member of your team is going to be waiting for it. So there's a sense of expect expectations. Then. I've seen this it's coming 100%. next year. I'm relying on it. Yes, I've and already my bought advice my kids is, presents. Some yeah, credit. yeah, it's it's wait and lay away. Yeah, so it's waiting. So my advice is, if you establish that, like if on January one, I would say we're not doing it next year. Yeah, but you can't wait till December to say uh, about that holiday bonus not going to happen because yep. they are counting on it. Transparency. Again. Yes. So another thing I absolutely hate, it. I hate the yearly review. We're going to okay. meet once a year. Oh, once a year to talk about my behavior and we're going to dredge up something from August that you've been saving. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the alternative? Yeah, you're going you... <laughs> to serve it up in a poop sandwich. <laughs> I love you. You're a great guy. Remember that time in August when you were a jerk? That's the poop. And then the top piece. Keep doing the good work, coming in every day. That's a poop sandwich. That's the yearly review. That's when people are going to angle for a raise. I don't like any of that. And something you've told me before is, as an employee, you found this, and you found you don't want to do it to your employee, it to, the, to your team, is they leave the door after your poop sandwich of, Something good happened, something bad happened. I'm confused. What was am I, that? Am, am I performing well? Was that a good thing? Yeah. yeah. So what's the alternative? Talk the alternative is I suggest that you, if you are a supervisor, you meet with your team members, whoever reports to you, once a week. Right. Once a week. And we look at your performance. So if you're a salesperson, we're going to keep score. If you're a production person, we're going to keep score. Sales right. would be your total sales, your average ticket, your close rate. A uh, performance um, for installation would be the number of hours bid versus the number of hours it took you. Okay. Job costing. Yes. All right. So those are those are two p ways we could play games. Now. And the scorecard is every single person has one, mm -hmm. and every person is accountable of what have they done to contribute to the company this week. Right. But this if week. we keep score, if we keep okay. score, and we don't tell them what to do to be able to get better. Suppose we keep score and they just awful, awful, terrible, missing it week after week, and you're just getting mad at them? Yep. That's mean. So if you're gonna keep score, you've gotta train people on a process or a procedure that's gonna help them get good. And we are guilty of this. We You're relating to this? Oh, so much so. We have expectations in our head because we're like, I've done this job before and I did it perfect. So the expectations are in my head. And then when someone doesn't deliver, I just give them bad feedback rather than what you're saying, which is create the procedures, create mm -hmm. the expectations, and then give people a score because of what you've already set from yeah. the beginning. Right? And this is not that difficult, really. You have to pause and you want to engage your team on how to do this. But if you're a salesperson and you're not hitting your numbers or not making any sales, you could take a sales class. 
Like there's someone else out there, you know, type it in, sales training in Google, and you're gonna get 14 million hits. And you listen to their free webinars and you find one that sounds kind of fun or maybe is focused on the trades. Yeah. And you get their course and you go through it and you practice it and you'll get better. There we go. There you go. So maybe you and your team could adopt the sales process and see if that doesn't help you make more sales. But it's like golf or skiing, like a lesson helps. Yes. And then you adopt a process and, and hold people accountable to those behaviors, you should get better results. And Ellen, in the 18 franchises that you have completely founded. Well, I, me and my team. I'm, I have two partners and now we have, you know, a, like over 100 team members. And She's it's a team really player. Exciting. She's I, my lady. Well, I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> But I'm a smart cookie <laughs> and I find some great partners and we're very excited about it. Yeah. And in them 18 franchises, mm -hmm. do they have weekly meetings? Yes. And do they all have scorecards? Yes. And does everyone in your business know what is expected of them? On our best days, yes. yes. So the other thing is like, you're gonna fail at this. I fail at it every day, but that's the intention and that's what we know works. You see, I'm an old lady and I've been doing this a long time and so have my partners. It took us a while to figure out some systems that would work and that's why we're franchising so that we yes. can help people get successful faster. You know, not have to take the long, slow curve before it starts to get good. So, you know, we figured out the systems and you know, people come and go from your company and, and you know, you may be, based on your personality, yeah. you may be someone who likes to run a tight, tight ship or you might be someone who's a little looser. But as you attract people to your company and you play a really great game, you have rules, you have a reason for playing, you have yeah. rights, you have rewards, then you might just find people who want to stay and help you grow the empire. And if not, just for, no, I'm going to cry, but just for the little while that they're with you, could you just love on them? Could you just help them out because they're probably going to go not you're not yeah. going to stay at a job True. forever you know i've had a lot of jobs but, but while they're, they're there, there yeah well whilst they're there <laughs> i'm gonna pick that up spoken like I a love queen that. <laughs> <laughs> but while so they're... Clean, queenly <laughs> yeah but when they're on your watch what could we do to help a brother or sister out yeah so i'm very much motivated by the people on our team having careers not just jobs figuring out this this uh, business business together. Now, Ellen, people, you know, you are someone that is walking your talk. You've done this, you've grown franchises. If there's someone listening to this and they're thinking, oh, just give me the guidebook, show me how it's done. Can you give them some advice? Can you tell them where to go to be part of your family? Um, Zoomdrain.com, Zoom, Z-O-O-M, Z. -O -O -M, Z. Oh, oh, am. Is that right? Yes. yes. Perfect. See, <laughs> I'm coming over. Okay. Zoomdrain.com is our website. And on the website is information about our company. And there's a place to get more information about franchises. It is a very um, low key approach. And I will help anybody who reaches out. I'll send she you some information. That. She yeah. did it to me. She truly means that. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll share information. I'm very generous. We are. If there's a good fit, if there's a way to meet, we're operating strictly in the U.S. right now. However, I like big dreams and big ideas, so I'd like to hear from you. Amazing. Well, if you want to hear more about Ellen, head to that website. And thank you so much for joining us. That's our Z for Zoom Drain. Am I doing it? You do the, this like a gun this way. Oh, gosh. There Although we go. I'm quite this way. <laughs> and now take the other one and put your thumbs together. Bam! Nice! <laughs>